Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're looking at a budget-friendly plasma cutter, but this one's different because it is CNC capable. And this one actually uses a blowback arc starting, so it has the, an electrode that'll move around, so it doesn't need a high-frequency signal, and that lets you run it on a CNC plasma table. It also has ports in the back to connect up for that. Now this one right now is $325 on Amazon. That is the cheapest CNC capable uh, machine that I've seen. In full disclosure, Best Arc did send this out free of charge to use for this review. Um, I'll give it a fair shake and, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything I think you'll see throughout this video. I don't really do a lot of unboxing, but I do appreciate when things are packaged so that they won't get damaged. And there's the custom cut foam inserts. That's a nice touch. Everything fits in really well with padding all the way around the unit itself. And a box here that has all the accessories. We've got an air hose, probably won't use that. A work clamp and cable, you know, it's nothing to write home about. Some extra consumables, a 120 volt adapter. We're gonna try that out. And then the torch here some pigtail cnc adapters to hook it up to your table and the leads are labeled so that's a that's a nice touch too it's the ipt60 style torch i'm not sure if the consumables are exactly the same if they're compatible i assume they are it sure looks like it and in that case you can actually get drag consumables for this uh, that can install a drag shield over the top to use templates and stencils a little e more easily than a standoff like this. When you look at the lead on the torch, it's just this thin sheathing over the top. I don't like this as much as the you know ones that are really like a hose on higher end machines. But again, this is pretty typical for a budget friendly plasma cutter and it'll definitely work, just isn't as durable uh, as other things. Let's go ahead and take a look at the box itself. On the front here, uh, you have your panel with some knobs. We'll play with that a little bit. And then it has the air pressure regulator located right on the front. That's a nice touch, uh, a lot better than having it to run on the back. And then on the back of the unit, uh, there are a couple of plugs for your control signal as well as an arc voltage. From what I understand, uh, it says voltage divider one to one, which means there's not a voltage divider. So you're dealing with raw voltage out of here. So, you know, proceed with uh, some care on that. And then your air hose connection and simple switch. All the connections are in uh, one plug here for the torch. This is a pretty standard style of connector. And so I'll go ahead and plug that in. Easy enough. Over here, it's got the DINS connector for the work clamp. I have it set up here in kind of a weird spot because I'm just running some temporary air while I finish up some workshop renovations before I get my airlines all running everything. Okay, it's powering on. Who we got the graphics. Screen is uh, pretty bright. Looks like it's easy to read. Pilot arc time, just yeah, turn it up a little bit, post flow time, just let it run. Then over here, this is amperage, turn that up. Over here is 2T and 4T. 2T, it'll run whenever you have the trigger pulled. 4T, you pull and release to start and pull and release to stop. 2T is how I'm gonna run it. Then over here, there's a mesh and plate feature. So we'll try that out uh, in a little bit too. And right here to flow some air so that you can adjust pressure. How to adjust air pressure, it's just this air pressure regulator knob. Then when I flow air, that pressure will drop and so I can adjust it while it's running and then turn that off. It's gonna be kind of loud, so let's, uh, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and try it out on this half inch thick plate. Have it maxed out at 50 amps. I'm gonna follow the straight edge with that standoff and see how it does. Now a question I get asked a lot is about eye protection. I'm wearing shade five for this amperage, but uh, you can also adjust a welding helmet to an appropriate level. So just use what's appropriate in, in your own uh, situation, but shade five is, is typically pretty good for an amperage like this.
All right, so let's see if it made it through. Uh, there, that looks pretty clean. Let me get something to clean off that dross. Dross is pretty common, especially on thicker stuff. Uh, on thinner stuff, it's usually a result of traveling too slow, but when you get into the upper limit of what a machine can do, it's pretty much unavoidable to some extent. So let me knock some of this off of here. Yeah, pretty nice. So let's try it on some thinner material and see how that works out. Now I've got some quarter inch here. I'm gonna try it on just a straight cut along here and see how that does as well as a little piercing test. All right, if you look at that cut, right there's that spot I kind of messed up and had to go over again, but there's, there's not a lot of dross on there. That's pretty good. Um, and the cut quality, I mean, that is, that's pretty clean. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into 120 volts with the uh, adapter here, and we'll try that out on some quarter inch material. All right, here we go. One issue that comes up on these machines is when you have them maxed out on 120 volts, the amperage draw can be pretty high, so I decided to measure that, and I was getting over 40 amps uh, input. Next, I'm gonna try out the mesh mode on some expanded metal. One of the issues with uh, some machines is you kind of have to pause in between each section that you cut on expanded metal to let the pilot arc reignite. Uh, let's try out the mesh mode and see if we can just cut continuously across here. I still had to pause, so let me turn off mesh mode and see if it's really any different. So I couldn't really tell much of a difference with the mesh mode and with it off. I might not understand really what it does. There's not a lot of information in the manual. I've turned it back on one more time just to give it one more try and see if I can notice any kind of difference. Honestly, I couldn't really tell any difference. If you know something I don't about this mesh mode, uh, let me know in the comments. Now, let's try this out with some CNC cutting. The table I'm setting this up on is the Langmuir Crossfire Pro. I've had this for six or eight months. I bought it myself and uh, replaced a table that was maybe larger, more heavy duty, but uh, I actually like this one better. It's just simple and easy to use. And as often as I can, I order laser cut plates, but sometimes that's not in the cards for a project. If you'd like to know a little bit more about plasma cutting workflow and a little more about this table, let me know in the comments and we could make some videos about it. I haven't really done much with this one uh, on the channel here. So the Langmuir THC box actually has a connection for one-to-one -one or raw voltage. So I just connected that directly to the pigtail that came with the unit 
and the torch firing up to the box. So I just mounted the hand torch directly here uh, onto the table. I believe you could connect a machine torch to this power supply, but the hand torch should be good enough for what we're doing. Probably be a good idea to put a bag or something over it. So maybe I'll do that and then we'll kick the tires and light the fires. Now with it hooked up, the first thing I'm gonna do is check the arc voltage to make sure that I have a good feedback for my torch height controller to work. Okay, so it's giving me a reading of 135 volts, roughly. That one-to-one -one right into the Langmuir THC is working just like it needs to. So one thing I will say, and perhaps this could be a suggestion for best arc, the parameter table in the manual is basically useless. It's very limited. It has you reduce amperage for thickness and only has a couple different uh, thicknesses available and has no arc voltages. So I'm going off of one of my hypertherm tables. I'm gonna see how that works. So I'll start off with a simple three inch diameter circle cut. And if nothing hits the fan, we'll try something a little bit more complicated. Fire in the hole. All right, when you have a water table, you get to do a little bit of fishing, but overall uh, it's a circle. So it worked, but I'm going to uh, play with my arc voltage a little bit. I have a pretty bad taper on it and the arc looked pretty long. So I'm gonna try turning that down a little bit, even though it's on the low end of what uh, I would have thought I'd need, but uh, we'll try it again. All right, making a little bit more progress here. From what I'm seeing, it's pretty consistent. So let's try to cut something a little bit more involved. It turned out pretty good. Um, if you look at the edges, I do have, let's see if it'll focus in there, a little bit of taper still. But again, I, I haven't really dialed the parameters in and I think once that's dialed in, that'll just take care of itself. Um, so overall, pretty good. Very minimal dross here. You can see a little bit more dross in like corners and curves. And that's usually because the machine just has to travel a little bit more slowly there. So that's pretty typical and comes off pretty easily. But on the straight runs where it's able to maintain its travel speed, there's basically no dross. So, uh, you know, that's the, that's the result I got. Let's try something just a little bit thicker, quick uh, cut on maybe some 316s, quarter inch, something like that. Let me see what I have laying around. I'm gonna try cutting a flange out here and see how it does in a little bit thicker material running CNC. Now, if you notice the sparks shooting back up, that means I'm traveling too fast. So I'm gonna dial back the feed rate right here, and this looks like it's gonna be a lot better. So I'm gonna try it again at that feed rate all the way around. Let's take a look at the part itself. Uh, overall, doesn't look too bad. The edges, the cut quality is pretty good. I think my speed was about right. Now, if you look, there is a little bit of dross in a few areas. Some of this has been chipping off just with my fingernail. So it's, it's really uh, pretty minimal in, in most places. There is a little bit of a taper to the cut that could probably be adjusted out because it tapers um, in towards the top on both sides. That usually means that the cut height was a little bit too high. And so I could adjust my cut height and my arc voltage just a little bit to avoid that. But uh, either way, not a bad part at all. Right at the end of the day, what do I think about it? Well, you saw the same results that I did. Um, so you can draw your own conclusion, but a few things that stood out to me that I think are really good on the machine. The front panel is easy to figure out and navigate. The regulator on the front is easy to handle. 
Um, it's a nice, bright, easy to read display. So I thought that was really good. It's nice that it also has the CNC interface built directly into the machine. So those are some, some really good things about it. Uh, a couple of drawbacks. One is that amperage draw on 120 volts. I mean, that's gonna stress just about any electrical system that I'm aware of. So, you know, be aware of that. Also the voltage output being a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. So the raw voltage off the torch. I think is less ideal than using like a 50 to one voltage divider that a more professional level machine would have. So those are a couple of, a couple of drawbacks there. A question that often comes up is about longevity. How long is it going to last or how well it will hold up? I can't tell you because I've just tried this. You've seen everything that I've done with it. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't have uh, much of a comment there. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. We'll see you next time.